And we are away for the Pro-Am exhibition race here at New York and the Super GT predicted to be leading the field down to T1. That master behind has legs as well, but look at the Mercedes in third position already in the sit stream of the Subaru. Super GT going to the inside straight away to defend the corner. Looks like he's going to lead into T1. Looks like the master's going to try and make a move around the outside. No, Kaluski takes second place. Greer goes down into third. Matt Gallagher up into fourth. More importantly, Montoya and Fraga up into fifth position. What a start from those guys. Into the left-hander, he's got Matt Gallagher in front of him through the left hander and then coming up in towards all oh, a bit of a slip and a slide there for Greer Jordan Greer has made a mess of his exit going through turn number five and he slides down the order and look as well oh. big drama there as well as Kalusi makes a Horlicks of turn seven that allows Gallagher and Sim to come through as well as Montoya and Fraga's machine but that is an absolutely dramatic opening lap and here comes Montoya now all over the back of Matt Gallagher in the slipstream he is Gallagher surely going to go defensive and force Montoya to take the long way round into the breaking zone of turn ten we go nearly down the inside and down the inside for Juan Pablo Montoya through ahead of Matt Gallagher here in Catalonia from ninth to second in the space of three quarters of a lap. Up into second position. Now, can he chase down Super GT? That's the question. The gap already up to four seconds at the front there. Montoya making a hash that hits the curb there. Gets it sideways, just about gathers it back up again. But there's a second position that he fought so hard for is now lost again. He's going to have to try and chase down Gallagher one more time. But still, despite that little mini half spin there, up into third after the first lap. Here are our leaders right now. Super GT uh, looking nice and easy at the front of the field there. Because you have more power. Yeah. Yeah, he says. I think what we're having there was... Uh, Toyota is very fast on the straight. You can't take benefit. You know, these guys are battling ahead of me. Yeah, the voice there of uh, Mike Fernie from Drive Tribe. Oh, I'm shaking a bit. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, he's shaking a bit because he's looking at this action going on in front of him as well between Greer and Kaluski. Side by side, they come down the start finish straight, heading in towards turn number one, over the brow of the hill. The Mazda are on the inside, the Mercedes on the outside. Greer trying to attack against Kaluski. Is he going to have a lunge down to turn one? Yes, he is, and straight into the back of Kaluski there goes Fernie as well. Now, oh, this is a good run for Fernie so far. I was very nervous in saying that. I think he's just clipped the curb, so a bit of a commentator's curse right there as Fernie gets it all wrong coming through the large came Very easy to do that given how high the curbs are. That's going to hurt him all the way down the straight now. But in the meantime, Kaluti and Imael behind there having a great scrap on board there with the McLaren. Just trying to hold on to the back of the AMG Mercedes coming down the straight. He'll then go to the inside, coming down the T1. Great overtake opportunity there. So what will he do later on the brakes? It looks like he's going to slide through on the inside. He does in the background. Morel as well getting involved. And Kaluski is getting absolutely mobbed from both sides. Contact there between the Mercedes and the McLaren. And again, the Corvette running into the back of the AMG. And right now, these guys are in the wall. Six, seventh, and eighth place right next to each other on track. Now it's going to be a drag down to T4. Let's see who has it down here. Here comes Kaluski in the background. The inside, though, he backs out of it. Ren goes inside in contact with Ismael and he's going to go through and Ismael gets just rammed off onto the outside of the circuit. Bad luck for him, wrong place, wrong time and Ren goes from 8th to 6th place in a couple of corners and Kalusi looks to the inside as well. This, these guys are going on it, Tom. And now this is the first opportunity for these drivers to change over to their pro drivers. Now, does Super GT do it? We were speaking to him earlier on yes. and he says that he was going to after four laps and he does do exactly that. Put Mikas out in the car. And he said uh, he's going to be the faster choice and the better opportunity in this race. He was saying, yeah, as soon as, soon as I can, I'm getting Nick in the car, I know he's quicker, so Nick getting in the car now. Late on the brakes for Valverde, a little bit too late on the brakes, he misses the apex, that'll compromise his run through turn two, and will it allow Miazono an opportunity through the right-hander of turn three? You can see how much more speed he's got, he's got the inside line, looks like there was a bit of contact between those drivers, it allows Lekovsky to draw side by side as well with Valverde, down in towards the right-hander we go, nearly three wide for position, very defensive there from Miazono, here comes Lekovsky on the inside versus Valverde, and he manages to find his way through, but Valverde's going to have the inside line again down in towards the left-hander of turn number five. Let's listen to some team radio. 3.7 yet. All the drama's happening behind you. Yeah. <laughs> Just got to keep it clean. These lines are beautiful. 
immediately Lopez in the Toyota goes to the inside free wide they're coming across the start finish line we have Lukowski on the inside McLaren in the middle and then Valverde on the left she's going to come out ahead of this it's a drag race down to T1 Fernandez in front Lukowski tries to go for both of them he's going to make it he's on board side by side sorry with Valverde puts him off onto the, the green stuff there so Lukowski nice and aggressive through there I wonder if the stewards want to look at that or not but uh, I think that was just very opportunistic there from Lukowski but Mir Mirzana coming back on the inside now is just placing your car in the right place and all the while Valverde in the background just looking to try and make those places back. Three drivers all squabbling for position. You can see Miazono going defensive. Lukonski has to go to the outside line. Here comes Valverde. He sends it down the inside at turn seven. But he bites oh, off the Lopez off. And Lopez gets biffed off there in the drama as well. Huge drama here at turn number 10 in the Pro Am race. Lopez gets spun round. Valverde manages to make a complete Horlix of his braking zone down into turn number 10. You can see the smile on the face <laughs> of Bernie Valverde there. Well, I think he's got no other option opportunity if he wasn't laughing he'd probably be crying at the moment uh, super of uh, lopez at the front here goes uh, takes his corner normally valverde just goes from another postcode <laughs> yeah that was never gonna Bernie, work what was you it? doing mate Bernie, that's not all right goodness me <laughs> meanwhile here is igor fraga now behind the wheel of the honda nsx and he's closed that gap down quite significantly to matt simmons who is now behind the wheel of the uh, jaguar just in the forefront of his shot now it's down to 1.3 seconds meanwhile we've hardly mentioned him over the course of this one Mikhail Hazal, what a great job he's doing. 9.4 seconds, the advantage now sits to second place. Yep, he's just doing his thing out there, and he's just driving around. He likes being at the front of the field, just making it easy. And unsurprisingly, we have a slowdown penalty there for uh, the uh, Valverde car. The colliding with another car. I think colliding is uh, putting it lightly, but uh, yeah, it's been a clear cut. Uh, romp away from the rest of the field for Super GT and Mikhail Hazal. But this battle for second place really intensifying here in these closing stages, Jimmy. It is, and of course, uh, Fraga really in the, the better position. He's on the slipstream off the, the Jaguar in front and coming up now to one of the better overtaking spots on the circuit on board coming through the the right left Fraga got an okay run out of there but then Simmons a little bit slidey on exit now dipping into the slipstream can Fraga get this done here we go you're going to see now the cars get closer together as Fraga pulls into the draft and T1 is probably going to be the best place to try and do it Brazilian driver pulls up to the back of Simmons. Will he dive to the inside here? He does the last minute late on the brakes. Not quite late enough, though. Simmons also breaking late to try and uh, uh, dissuade Fraga for making the move. And then sideways there, both of them out of T2 as they scramble to get on the power. And now through the very, very long right hand at T3. This absolutely burns the front left tyre. Simmons going a bit wide there. Fraga now on the inside. This might be the chance, but Simmons comes across defensive and keeps second for now. Will Fraga go around the outside? No, hasn't quite got the grip for that time. Very close racing between them, though, today. How they run down into towards turn number five isn't normally an overtaking opportunity. Fraga might try and invent something, but I think he's going to play the long game here. You can see Simmons there going late. He's gone well wide. That's allowed Fraga to go through here on the final lap. Brilliant stuff there from Igor Fraga. He pressured Matt Simmons into making a mistake, and that is exactly what the Australian has done here on the final lap of this Pro Am race. The Honda NSX of Montoya and Fraga now leads in this battle for seconds. Can you hear it? Smooth operator! <laughs> Come on! Yes! <laughs> well, I tell you what, that was that's an ending to the race, oh, isn't it? Super word. GT and Mikhail Hazal do take victory in the Pro Am exhibition race here in New York for World Tour Three.